Hi, so this is going to be my attempt to break down some of my fighting at uh, Kaid's Crown Tournament in September this past year. Um, I'm Avery, the fellow in the uh, silver armor, and I'm going to be facing off against Count uh, Wilhelm Skallgrimson, or Skala as people tell him, uh, or call him. And this one's tough for me because basically I got my ass kicked this entire fight. <laughs> Um, and what I'm going to try to do is sort of include these both of these two videos because they show things from different camera angles. And my objective here uh, is to learn what I can do to improve my fighting skill and hopefully offer him a little bit more of a challenge the next time around. So this is uh, SCA Combat. Um, for folks unfamiliar with it, uh, you're not allowed to target the near below. Uh, otherwise, one good solid hit to the body, head, arm, or leg will damage that. So body or head and you're dead, arm or leg, and you lose the use of your arms or that leg, or vice versa. Um, cool, so let's give this a little try. First, I'm going to run through the opening exchange. Uh, during this time, I did a little bit of counting, and it's pretty clear the way the fight is going, just based on the, the statistics for shots thrown, so I'll talk a little bit about that. And I'm going to try to control the camera on both of these so that um, I can analyze the fight footage a little better. So I'm going to run through the whole first exchange and then go back sort of play by play. Okay, so that's the opening sequence. Uh, here things get paused and the videos end up out of sync unless I change things up a little bit. What happens is I threw a shot that hit the bottom of Skala's shield and then skipped down into his knee, so there's a little pause time for him to walk uh, walk the injury off. That was accidental and I feel bad about it. Uh, every now and then a, sh a shot does skip off a shield and hit an illegal target. Um, still, it's not the sort of thing you want to do. So if we go back, what I'm going to try to do is go through this a little bit more analytically now that we've sort of seen that opening exchange. Um, and we'll sort of go uh, one pass at a time. So first of all, before anything happens, you can see my shield guard, especially on the right-hand side of the frame. That shield is strapped in such a way that I've got it in a bad position there. The hand is uh, up here in the back, and the arm angle is sort of like pretty extreme, maybe like that. So what that means is that this point is kicked over too far this way. It should be out over in front of my lead leg, and I'm having trouble pushing my elbow far enough that direction to be able to get the coverage. So what that means that I need to do is I need to, let's see if I can use this tool, nope. Uh, what I need to do is basically move the hand position down some, and that'll make the arm line a little bit more like this. Uh, well, actually, that's a little too high, probably more like there. And what that'll do is allow me to kick the shield point over further. That's especially important against left-handers. So that's a that's an armor strapping consideration, something that I already know I need to do. And right off the bat, I see this, and if I was Scala, I would be looking to eat that leg right here. I'd be attacking that. So um, the other thing is I feel like that sword position is a little awkward. What I've done is I've rolled the hand forward. So it looks like I'm threatening the offside. I can already tell what I'm doing is setting up for a thrust, which gets close, but not close enough. So that thrust right there, if we go back, gets close, but doesn't, doesn't get where it needs to be. Oops. See, the problem with, for me, I apologize, I always go the wrong direction when fast-forwarding and rewinding in this. So if we look at this thrust, we're setting up, I'm trying to bait him into range, you can see I'm shuffling my feet to try to get about an extra inch of reach. I throw it like an offside, and the good news is he reads it as an offside shot. His sword is out to protect his head, and what I'm able to do 
is throw for that gap, which is nice. Right, so it sort of works the way I wanted. He thought it was going to come on the outside of his blade. Instead, it's coming under. The thrust is coming in. My elbow position's okay. The thrust looks like it's going to land with power, but my targeting's a little off. You see it hits his shield there. And it comes off the shield and hits him in the face and the head. Um, I, You know, Kaid's a, a positive touch kingdom, uh, but that is such an iffy shot. It, it banged off the shield and... You know, that, that's not a blow that, uh, even if it was possible to tell that it also touched him, I wouldn't have wanted him to take that shot. Um, what that needed to do was really come in here. That's what it should have done. Not into the shield and up into the face like that. So that, that thrust right there, had it landed, actually, I'd be in a much worse state because I wouldn't have known how the rest of this fight was going to go and how badly I was going to get dominated for the rest of it. Okay, so that's the first shot. Pretty happy with it, just a little bit of targeting, and if I look at my foot position, it's a little wide. I feel like this back foot should gather step in a little bit better. I don't need to stay that wide. So I do gather and sort of pull that back foot up under me, but I'm not completely convinced I'm doing that right. My balance isn't terrible at this point yet, though, so it's not, not too bad. Here, though, I feel like this back foot is crossing, in this video on the left, you can see it's crossing pretty far over. I think... Instinctively, the reason I'm doing that is I know that there's an onside shot threat. There's no real offside blow for him to throw from here with power. So what I'm expecting him to do is pivot and throw an onside shot, which he does. And I think the reason why I cross so far to the side is to get away from that shot and I get the block out to defend. Um, looking at this shot on the right side, you can see another big gear problem. Look at how far my shield is bending. I apologize, I keep going back and forth, but if you look right here, you can see how far the shield flexes when it gets hit. So that is way too flexible a shield. Um, and it looks like the videos have come out of sync somehow, which is problematic. Oops. But hopefully it's not too bad. I need to stop doing that. Okay, so that's one exchange. Let's go into slow-mo for this next one. So you can see he's baiting for the thrust, and that thrust is a feint. And then he goes for the he goes for the leg. I call the leg is no good. So let's go back and watch that at speed. Oops, going forward again. Okay. So starting here, you can see he's popping the tip. I'm reading it as a potential threat. And I'm ready to move my face out of the way. I'm sort of counter posturing. I'm not sure if I'm doing myself much good here, but what I'm trying to do is track the tip of his sword so that if he does thrust, I can block it with my sword blow. But if you look at my knee position, my, especially my rear knee, it looks awkward to me. I feel like that leg should maybe be straighter. My heel's up off the ground a lot. I'm not really in a good position to strike. I'm not sure quite. I think instinctively I'm just trying to make a small target, but I'm not sure that that's necessarily doing me much good. All right, so he comes in, he gathers up. I think I read that back step. Here, what I've done is maybe faint a face thrust, but really I'm just generating some power. You can see his thrust not on target. It's easier to tell on the, the, on the right, but I'm gonna slip past it. What I'm trying to do here is throw an onside shot to the body or leg. If I had the ability to throw an offside from here, I feel like that could have been a good kill. If I could have brought the blade in like that on the offside, that probably would have been the right decision. I just don't know that I have the technique to be able to throw a killing blow from that position. And again, I've got a really wide stance. So I'm definitely chambering up for this big whooping shot. Now he throws an offside here. I think, if I remember correctly, that hits the basket. It's between frames. And he's definitely defended against my shot. And then he throws for the leg. Now this one sounds really good in the video, and here it looks really good. Like that looks like it creams me right in the leg on the right hand side. And I watched the video on the right first, before I watched the video on the left. And I hear this bang, and I see that, 
And I'm like, oh, maybe I should have called that shot. Because look at how far out of position my shield is. And as far as technique goes, look at my back. And here's the line between my legs. That's a terrible position to be in. I'm doing a terrible job here, but I'm desperately sort of trying to get the leg out of the way. And it doesn't, on the video on the right, it doesn't look like I've done it. Right, here comes the shot. Here, bang. But when you watch the video on the left, which is a little behind, you can see it just skims the tip pass. So you can see the shot coming in. Swings down, and it's just at maximum range. So that's probably just his thrusting tip that hit me. So after watching the video on the left, I felt a little better about not calling that shot. But look at how... Okay, so I'm going to go back a little bit and just move it forward slowly. You can see I leave my feet and I start leaning out of range, which is really dumb. So I throw this blow. My feet are there. We cross up. Now, instead of getting my feet back under me, and I'm not sure the best way to do that, I probably would have... The best way to do that is probably crumple the left leg up and sort of step back with it. Like if I take this back leg and simply lift it and move it back this way, then I'd be able to get my feet back under me. It doesn't look like I've, you know, I've got my weight planted on that front leg. It feels like I could push it back, but I'm not. So I sort of just put it under me, and it looks more out of position in the left video, but now I'm just leaning to get away from that onside shot. I'm not sure what I should do differently. I'm sure a more analytical person would be able to tell. Maybe if I threw the offside leg here, I could tag him in the offside leg. If I was in that position, I could hit him here. If I could bring my sword over my body and crank, and maybe take this, take this right foot and pivot it around, so out and back that way, and throw the offside, I'm not sure. That's definitely one to think about. So now I'm leaning out of that leg shot, and then there's that pass. You know, oops, and I think in the conversation he, he sort of says, yeah, it didn't hit, hopefully. Um, all right, so here we go into another pass. He's about to jump in. I'll do this one in slow-mo again. I think. Okay, so that was a pretty long set of passes. I'll go back here. Okay, so yeah, that's the leg shot there. I called off his tippy. All right, so we jump in. Here again, Scala always looks like he's in good position. He's got good balance. Here, I've got this back leg sort of crumpled under me in this weird position. I'm not sure that it's necessarily bad, but I certainly don't see a lot of other fighters do it. And I'm not, you know, I, I don't even necessarily know that I'm, I'm acting that way, that I'm that keyed up. I like to think that I'm on... Uh, I'm pushing off the arch or the outside crescent of my left foot if I'm going to advance from there. But if I'm up on the ball of my foot like that, I'm not really sure what I'm accomplishing. So that's something I definitely need to think about. Oh, okay, so we're stepping forward, getting ready for the attack. Now, Scala does a pretty readable attack here, very common with center grips. He pushes his shield forward. He's charging back, and it looks like a, it's going to be an offside shot, but it could easily be... Sorry, it, it looks like an onside shot, but he's pulling the blade back over his head, and it could easily be an offside shot, right? So he comes forward, bumps the shield back. In this case, he's doing an onside with it, it looks like. So I've read, and I'm sort of just ranging back because I don't know which it's going to be. Covering with the sword in case. Now, now he's... It looks like he actually... Here's what he'd done. He's pumped, and I don't know if that was a pump fake... And then he saw that I was covering and decided to abort or if that was actually an intentional fake all along. So whether, it was it a feint or a fake? I don't know. Now he's faked the offside. I'm still reading. And he's gotten himself sort of out of position where about the only thing he can do now is attempt for a high snap. Now I haven't counter shot at all. I'm counting on my sword for defense. It looks to me as though his onside leg might be open right here. Um, maybe I should be throwing the leg shot right now. And again, I'm already starting to get in this position where my back 
and the center of my feet are out of alignment. And that starts getting me into a position where I feel like I don't have as good, right? You look at Scala, bam. Look at me. This is the difference between a count and a hopeful maybe one day. <laughs> All right, so pressing on, he throws that. And, and instead of coming high, it looks like he's going to throw high up over my shield, but he's thrown it into a flat snap. Again, you see my shield completely bend in half I, in two places. It bends first there, and then it bends the bottom. And I am apparently throwing just a garbage onside shot to keep his stick busy and him out of the way. Now, I might be throwing for the head here instinctively, but it's certainly not doing anything. He's got that big shield, um, the Depylon shield, but... Uh, I, you know, honestly, I don't know how much of a threat this is. So I throw my shot. He continues to step in. I'm going to zoom in on this one a little bit. And he manages to combo. So this is cool. He throws, I'm going back, he throws the first shot. He's jumped a little bit. He's doing sort of a, a, a high return, circular motion. Throws another onside shot. And I've thrown no attack to, you know, counter him. Now, I'm not an arm hunter, you know, or anything like that, but it looks to me as though, especially in the video on the right, if I were looking to pick up an opportunity, I should be swinging right here. And our videos are definitely out of sync again, so what I'm going to do is quickly adjust that. So, um... Again, I don't have a real threat that I'm presenting to him at this point. And here you can see, I think a lot of it, maybe I'm making excuses, I think a lot of the reason I end up in this ridiculous shield high position is because my shield is buckling so much. Um, but I feel wide open here. Now, fortunately, he's not in a position to take advantage of it. But I'm very much keyed up and ready to throw a shot. I'm looking under my shield edge. I think I'm looking at his feet. I'm not sure what, what I'm trying to read off of at this point. I should probably be throwing the onside leg here because if I move that right foot forward and take a gather step, I can probably reach his leg with that before he can get the depylon down, but eh, maybe not. See, his sword is guarding it really well, right? So I think maybe I read that and say, no, it's not going to happen. I don't know. And here's something else, especially in the video on the left, it looks like I'm starting to recover and look over my shield in range. If he was ready to pounce off that back foot, Maybe on the right video, I'm a little further away, it, it seems, but I don't think I'm really in super danger here, and it's obvious, but maybe I am in danger, because I might be in closer range than I think. So now I think, okay, I know my psychology here. I'm like, he's pressing me a bunch. He's starting to get comfortable with the pace of the fight. I need to press him so that he understands that I am also controlling the pace of the fight to some degree. I'm not 100% counterpunching. So now I'm coming in, and look at... As I step forward, look at my position. I think I'm getting ready for that cross step, but I'm very far forward. And if I had to turn around, I don't know that I'd be able to. So I do cross, gather up. So I'm not out of balance long, but I've leaned forward. Now I'm settling down, and that shield tip is starting to come up. I've also closed into closer distance, and my, short, my sword is behind my head. So, it, like, if he had a really, really fast and strong offside shot, he could pop me in the head right here. So what am I going to do? From this position, I can already tell I don't have a good offside. Other people might. With that hand position, I can't throw the offside very well without adjusting. So I'm throwing an onside shot, and, man, look at what I've done with my back knee. I am really reaching for that leg shot and trying to draw power. This is probably a really bad idea. If you look at the angle on my knee on the left here, look at the angle of my foot. That to me looks like a knee that could break. <laughs> the stuff that you do at speed that you don't think you're doing, that is probably very unwise. And I'm still feeling threatened by the potential shot to the head. I am surprisingly well guarded in the leg, my front leg, because um, I can move my shield point pretty easily. 
But I think this is me trying to find the range, despite the fact I'm fighting shield leg forward in, at this moment. So I throw a pretty easily blocked leg shot. And now he's going, he's countering for the offside. So I'm going to punch my shield up to try to pick it up with the corner. Yep. Oh, you know what? He's not throwing the offside. It looks like it. He's throwing the onside. So I, I don't know if I read it right at the time, and I'm reading it now in the video wrong. But I thought that was going to come over as an offside. But it's definitely an onside shot. And he almost gets it. You can see I, I get the block. But it's almost sort of lucky. Especially with the way the shield's bending that I managed to get that defense up. And again, blown way out of position. Look, look at the response after the shield bends. I come way back. Now he's gone forward on his front leg to try to get that reach. He's standing on one foot right now. This would be the perfect time if I didn't decide to defend with my sword and my shield, or if I had a better sword recovery, now is the time to pop him. So how could I have recovered? If I go back, I throw this deep leg. If I had done a return of my right hand to my right shoulder, I maybe could have thrown a deep wrap and hit him in the far side of this head, right there, like a round back behind his defense, maybe? But I think I'm just thinking live, like survive, recover. I've got no offense at this point. And to me, it's becoming clear how this fight's going to go. All right, so once again, try to close in. He's throwing what looks in the right video to be an awesome snap. This is interesting. So it looks, in the left video, it looks like I'm throwing a reasonably threatening thrust. And it looks like he's throwing a snap. That looks like it's right on my head in the right video. But on the left video, you can tell it's actually, like, next to him. It's just a setup. The blade's just trailing behind him. So he's definitely thrown for that deep body offside. He's thrown, he's kicked the sword tip out to throw the deep offside. And I've actually poked his shield again. It's the second time I've ever come close to him. And look at how far I'm leaning too. Not necessarily a good position, but I'm relatively safe. And I'm pushing that shield over in advance of me. I've jumped again, haven't I? Yep. I've jumped a little bit. And the shield just caves under that offside. Fortunately, I'm able to, it seems like at speed, I'm able to read what's happening a little better than I am watching these videos. Now, he's definitely winding up for the onside shot as a follow-up, and I fade out of it. It looks like in this left video, he might have almost touched me, or a little bit. You can see he's really reaching. Left video, you can't see it. Or, sorry, right video, you can't see it. But definitely not like a solid shot. I don't even, we might even hear it. I don't know. Okay, so now he's recovered. I see a lot of guys do this. I never do. But he's recovered that sword over again. That's protecting his his uh, legs and also potentially chambering him for an offside leg shot. And look, again, he's in a good stance. I'm in this sort of both knees bent stance. I don't know. I have a lot to learn from him. All right. Once again, I'm maintaining distance. All right. Now I've decided to... So I faded back. And then I'm stepping forward, it's sort of a lunging step. Now he's, as soon as you see this motion, I'm throwing the offside. Trying to get in. He's easily got that blocked with a shield. Meanwhile, that's winding him up for the onside shot, which I'm reading. Now, here's what I, I if I could throw a really good offside, onside leg combo, then maybe I could whip that blade back around here. Well, that, that's a little hard to read. Uh, basically, come around over the top and smoke in that leg. Um, that's not really the motion that the sword tip would follow, but if I could throw from there and then just short chop into this exposed leg, it looks in this video like that leg's exposed. So I threw offside shot with my hand out and found a way to convert. Maybe pull the elbow down and pull this elbow to my hip and then... As I do that, the blade would come down to here, and then I could do a little teardrop return into the leg or something like that. That looks like the opening that I missed on this one to me. I don't know. Meanwhile, he's doing his offense, and I've just converted to defense again. Now, the good news is we're pacing the same. So it looks like I get the shield tipped down. I block that fine. 
And I, now I'm throwing another big looby shot. I'm trying to get around. And look, that leg is still there. I'm not seeing it because his shield is blinding me. But that leg is there. So instead, I go for a body wrap. And here's the thing. I threw it poorly. That opening, like I finally recognized it. But you can see... I've taken this deep step to try to get it, but I haven't rotated fully around. And when it lands, it just doesn't land very hard. Right? You can see, this is my chance. This is my second chance to win the fight. And yes, his shield's in the way of my hand. But I'm able to get the hand down. And there's really no excuse for this, like, weak motion. And you can see that the, the it, it sort of skips down or it skips up, depending on, you know. You can see it's just not landing quite right. And, in fact, I think you can see on the left it's even flat. Like, it's just not a good blow. I didn't get it. And there's almost no excuse for that. He, he didn't move much, so it's not like the target was getting out of the... Yeah, it would have even landed half flat anyway. So, just sad. I'm disappointed in myself. He's fully turtled up at this point. He also could just stand up and shove me over. Which means I'm really in a bad position. I really needed to finish that wrap. And I'm not sure what technique. So I've started high. It's probably that I needed to flip the elbow over sooner. You rotate that elbow this way. Rotate it out this way. To flip that elbow up so that by the time the blade is landing, it's perpendicular. And just get around that to pile on. It's tricky with the, the movement, but it, it's that's that's the difference between the fight I gave him and the fight that it would have taken to win. And also, look at how my shield is really out of position. So here he's thrown. I'm punching that shield way over my body to block his headshot. But now look it. If you ever see a heater facing the direction that it's facing right now, it should never be facing that way. <laughs> All right, so now he's recovering, trying to uh, get a short chop shot in. That one hits the basket. It looks like on the right it hits me in the head, but on the left you can see it hits the sword. This is why it's so nice to have the multiple camera angles. Because, again, I watched the video on the right after Crown first, and that, this, especially when you hear the metal, like the sound of metal, that just doesn't look good. But then you see it from the second camera angle, and it does. <laughs> yeah, learn not to doubt yourself, I guess. Um, all right. That's this next, and I think this is the penultimate pass uh, before this first half of the fight is done. The good news is my opponent is being really good. Scala is definitely understanding. Go to slow-mo and let's watch this last pass. Read the face thrust, fine. Shield's still out of position. <laughs> We're just counter-posturing. I'm trying to get him to do something. He's blocking. He's, now he's ducking. He's doing different sword blocks than he was before, so he's mixing up the fight. After a weak leg shot. Look at that, that back out that I do. It's not working. All right. So that's the, and then that's the shot that comes off his shield and hits him in the knee. So if we go back at this pass, again, I can already feel like this fight is not working the way I want it to. I've gotten a couple opportunities. I failed to convert on them. So here we're just doing counter posture. I can tell that the thrust from him is a threat, but I feel relatively safe with it. I'm relatively strong against the thrust defense, and I've left my sword out. Because I feel like it's going to foul any thrust he gives. I'm also thinking at this moment, it's probably stupid of me, I shouldn't thrust him immediately because he's going to read those, and that's one of my best weapons. So I want to keep that until I think it's going to land. Truth is, I probably should have just used it. Um, so here, as I move forward, I do a little pump fake. Again, my knees are bent. He's in good position. All his weight's on his front foot right now. And I'm not sure that I'm aware of that, so now I'm just winding up and starting to throw shots. Right, so I, I do a, another pump, trying to get him to move. He's not moving. Now his sword is not in a great position. If I had unlimited time to think about things right now, what I would be thinking about is what I need to do is bring the tip up over and then into that slot. 
that he's left. Because on the left video, you can't see how far forward the tip of his sword is. But on the right video, you can see it's quite a ways from his shield. So now he's going to, yeah, he's converting that to an onside shot. I pump the shield way out to block it. Instead of doing a passive defense to guard my head uh, and bring the shield just close to my head, I pop the shield out uh, to intercept. You can see the shield barely works. Look at the bend on that thing. It was there, and then pop. So I'm definitely over-blocking, but what I've wanted to do is push the shield away from me, and I've got a loose arm strap to allow me to do that. Um, the good news is, if he'd been able to feint a really good leg wrap from here, he would have smoked me. He could have even wrapped the body, probably, because I'm stepping in. I don't know if he can tell that I'm stepping in at this point, but I am. Oh, maybe I'm just sinking. No, I'm... Yeah, I am stepping in. Okay, sorry. Because um, I'm looking for the big the big hemo shot to throw. Now, at this point, my shield's so badly uh, tabled that I sort of almost need to leave it up. And his depilon is protecting him well. My own shield is stopping me from throwing the offside. And look at this left foot position. If I don't get that foot under me, I'm useless. So now I'm skating the foot along the ground. Look at that. Why am I in this position? <sighs> This is so painful to watch. <laughs> watch. And then I'm skating that foot around. My body is behind both of my feet, and I'm just using momentum to stay up. It doesn't look so bad on the left, but you see the video on the right, and it's just, it's not something to be proud of. Now, he's throwing the offside. I've left the shield up. And now I have to basically fall backward to get back into position. And he's still relatively balanced. So I'm falling backward. At this point, the good news is I'm relatively comfortable in this position, although I shouldn't be. It's probably just years of Gumby fighting. So I get back into guard. And now, I don't know why I've flagged this foot out to try to get a little bit of angle. That's a bigger step than I need to. And he's just moving. Like All he does is a little rotation. I have to do this big motion. He does just a little rotation. He's got it covered. So at least I'm not fighting linear. But he's making me go around the long ways around the outside of the circle. I'm looking for the headshot. I don't see it. I feel like he's going to counter with an offside. I don't throw it. Back out of range. Now, I've stepped back so that I'm sword leg forward again. Oops. So that I'm sword leg forward. Give me a little bit of reach on him. So part of that is to swap my feet up. And again, I'm stepping in with this deep step, chambered up, and I'm throwing for what has traditionally been one of my best shots. Oh, yeah. See, I even threw a little pump fake. Okay, so moving forward... I do a pump fake to the head. He doesn't bite it. He raises his sword just a little bit. And then I start trying to get under that big to pile on, and I'm going way low with it. That's not my best leg shot. Now, it's, it's on target, but he gets his shield there in time. You can see in the video on the left, it looks like I'm teeing off on his right knee. But the video on the right, you can see I'm actually shooting for his back thigh. So... This is what I'm aiming at. This is where it hits his shield. And that's where it pops into his knee, I think. Now, if I'm going to go back a little bit. If I threw this shot better, because this is usually a good shot here, you see I pump the hand up, and now what I should do is the plane of the hand should come out like this, straight forward. So it looks like a headshot. The blow should, this is kind of going into the Z, Z axis a little bit. But it should come out here. Instead, what I do is I drop it off the shoulder. I drop it off the shoulder and bring it down here. So bring it off the shoulder and start throwing that way. And that's wrong. What it should do is uh, I should pump the basket hilt straight towards him and then drop the tip if that makes any sense, but what I can, I'm watching myself, and I've already started cheating it down off my shoulder and down. So he's easily reading that that's a leg shot, because the hand's not really moving forward. The hand needs to move forward to about here before it starts to drop into the leg shot. So he picks it up on the shield, drives it down into that front knee, which I'm not aiming for, and I... Am now, because I've reached so far for it, I am leaning way back to get out. 
The good news is there's no real threat from him at this point, perhaps because he's just been hit in the knee. <laughs> Sorry, Scala. Um, all right. Off, and I've already spent 35 minutes breaking it down, and all I've really done is recognize all the things I'm, well, some of the things I'm doing wrong. Um, so I don't know if I've learned any important lessons to improve my technique, other than to be more like Scala. Um, yeah. So I will probably try to stitch this together with a little bit more information uh, in the second half of the fight. Okay, so here we have... Um... Uh, Count Scaligrim, uh, Wilhelm Scaligrim uh, versus Sir Avery uh, in um, uh, cr the Kaid's uh, Summer Crown, or Fall Crown. Summer? Yeah, it was September anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it always feels like summer in Kaid. It's like warm summer and cold summer is all there is. <laughs> so uh, before this, uh, we did a series of exchanges where uh, they ended in me uh, bouncing my sword off of Skull's shield into his leg. So we paused and restarted. And this is one of those nice, where it's nice to have two cameras. Oh, hit me in the leg. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So one of the concerns I had with the first portion of this video is that he was pretty much always in balance, mm -hmm. and I was largely out of balance. My shield was bending like crazy. This is the video that convinced me that I need to get a more serious shield. <laughs> and uh, it looked like I was reaching for a lot of shots, and he was throwing a lot more shots that were real threats. Yeah, his, his book placement... Like, what was I doing? <laughs> there was like no contest on that shot. I was like, I don't know what I was thinking there. Like, okay, so maybe I was, it looked like I was reading the offside head. Well, he throws up. He, th he, he gets the thrust, knocks it high. But what am I doing? Why am I leaving my shield there? He throws his shield high, so and he throws he, his sword high, high, too, so you think that it's going on the offside, but really it's the high line. up. Yeah. Some stupid part of me thinks his shield is what's going to attack me there. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> well, you can see the shame. You can see the shame in my body motion. <laughs> like, oh! I should have taken that as a kill out of humiliation. <laughs> like, yeah, it hit me in the thigh, but really, what's my excuse? There's no excuse for that. All right, well, all right. Uh, and here's where, if you could believe it, now's when it starts going downhill. <laughs> Can you zoom out on the one on the left just a little bit? Okay, cool. Oh, maybe I should have taken that. I don't know. Oh, I did. Okay, good. <laughs> That's the trouble with watching video after the fact, because, you know, you're fighting and you don't really know. Uh, okay, so it, it feels, it looks like I felt that in the shoulder. Okay, so if we're going through, I thrust, I miss. So close. It was like close, but not close enough, right? Like, my man, no. He would have been fine. Uh, so, what's going on here, Helgi? Help me out. Okay, so, um... Here we have, you start with your thrust, you re, you're recovering back, and we have basically a lot of, like, slop that's just getting, we have impact on, uh, your your shield catches his sword basket there, so that's yeah. fouling his shot, you're, but it's pushing your shield really high, yeah. and tabling it, yeah. your your shot here impacts at the, the basket hilt, and then tries to rotate around it, and then you're, you know, and then he's throwing his offside, right into your sword, which and you can then see. If we go back a little bit, it looks like it was foolish of me. I didn't see the opportunity, and maybe he could have recovered, but if we go back a ways, it looks like his leg was wide open. Right, like at the beginning, after the thrust, it looks like I sh I, as soon as he raises his shield, yeah, right there, right there. I should be throwing the wrap to the leg. Yeah. Or no, I, I would throw it as a flat snap at the leg and just as quick it, yeah. as possible. Right. Now, maybe I'm thinking there, my no, defense. That, that point right there, that's when Isn't the that leg was open. I, I don't I don't think like so. Shield's rotating back this way. Because yeah. this point he's he cannot see your arm at all, right? 
There, he has no sight picture on your on your arm. When you go through this entire he's thing blocking there. here, right? You're yeah. You, Avery's he's trying still, to double he's block still, there. I'm blocking with my sword and yeah. my shield. I'm being too defensive. Yeah. I think your rights are bared. And it, at this point, it feels almost too late because on the the left video. I think we came on link, but the left video yeah, looks did. like he's going to be able to block my elbow with the bottom edge of his shield. I think I see it, and I throw for it. Oh, yeah, yeah I do throw it. At do. least I throw yeah. for it. So what happens? He, I, maybe it's too late. He drops. I'm not sure. Or he steps out. What happens here? He, or, or just... Oh, there is. oh, I think he short, I think he got shortchanged. Well, no, I, but he I think... He probably didn't land hard. Right. So this is a short stick, but it, it's really, really short. And you can see that there's it a rotates it around. rotates around and it's half and, flat and yeah yeah so yeah since it's rotating around too it probably felt wonky on his leg so my technique was off there's the arm and no 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 what happened was is that this the that this shot right here catches your arm so there's an automatic hold called at this point and this shot no well this shot hits the the corner of the shield. The edge of the shield and probably hits the back. It's got to be the edge of the shield that stops me from taking that. Because I don't believe just because you hit right. me in the arm, you're not allowed to hit me in the body. So at this point, I'm thinking that back shot didn't really land. Well, no. When you look at this here, you see that there's it's coming around, and the shield changes position. So it is absorbing some of that force. Okay, yeah, good. Right? Because I, I remember, yeah, because I, I, I end up swapping arms, right? So I took the arm shot, and I'm just trying to keep the arm out of the way. So I don't throw the leg shot well enough. I, now, I would have taken the body if I thought it landed. So I guess I feel like the shield took enough off it. But I mean, at this point, it's just obvious. Now, uh, I actually have a question here, too, though. Now, this is... Uh, he was an excellent opponent. Had me, like, I had no doubt how this fight was going to end, based on the performance of this idiot who's throwing a shield right now. And, and, <laughs> and his, his, uh, his excellency, the royal peer. But... There were a lot of blows thrown past the knee line. And that's sort of like a Kaid thing, isn't it? And I don't right. really understand the so, knee line. Okay, thing, so okay, right? so um right. We get one um you get one step mm -hmm. beyond the knee and this he hasn't crossed this mm -hmm. plane of the knee. So in certain in like the west for example, yeah. um the uh the plane of the knees is actually the V of the knees, right? Yeah. In in Kaid, the plane of the knees is from the tops of your knees across. So as I can step outside of that as long as I don't step across, across so is, the line of your knees. Can I can I try? So what you're saying is in the West, and it's a little difficult to show. The plane of the knees is like this because that's where my knees are pointed in the V shape. Is that what you're saying? And in Kaid, and then the, the line. Across, you're saying it's so you, this, right? Across the point. Because I got one point of the knee there and one point of the knee there. Right. Okay. I think that's the interpretation in on tier as well. Um, but, I mean, plane of the knees is such an obscure yeah. and vague term. I, I understand why people are confused. So, um, that makes sense to me. Okay, so please continue. So, obviously I throw the leg shot. It doesn't land right. I don't throw a good technique. He takes the arm. I'm taking the arm. I managed to luckily pick up that wrap. If he'd gone two inches deeper, it would have been a kill on the combo. Yep. And now I'm fighting left. <laughs> now I'm screwed. When left arm when against a uh, leg <laughs> has every when every every advantage. When you're back like this, how far does your armor does it float away from your body at all? A little bit. Because that's what I was wondering. Because it looks like it flexes yeah. quite a bit. A little bit. Hits, so that's. Oh, yeah. so are you? So there's a chance that I just didn't feel I, the armor. I, you didn't feel it all in your actual body. It looks like it extends a little bit from your body, and the whole thing kind of crushes and flexes a little bit. You know. So it might have bit. Yeah. yeah. So um, I feel like it's. Thought. I mean, I know the part where it digs into my spine, so I mm -hmm. think it's pretty close. But it might actually gap away. I think you might be right, Bjorn. And then obviously so, the fight's kind of over yeah. at this point. <laughs> well, but before this, in, there's there's this period of posturing where you guys are trying to decide how you are going to react to one another, right? Because you're in a bad position, right? I'm he hoping for the double kill is the best I can hope at this right. point. Now, so of course I throw right into his block because that's <laughs> going to be the most effective way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
was hoping he would get distracted and someone would shoot him with a crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Avery. But the, the, so Scala keeps his arm, his block. He keeps his blocks really out in front. When he's using it just to absorb power, and then he immediately follows up with the onside shot. But he's using the, the impact of your sword to, power to, to, to whip it, or, right. to use that momentum to whip it around. The way I should be. Yeah. But I'm not. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, I... The ignoble death I deserve. <laughs> <laughs> and boom goes the dynamite. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I think we got that one. 